Hello, welcome to Strawberry on the Farm, take two. I'm Christy, and today in the chapel we have one of my favorite verses, Proverbs 23, 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so he is. So, yeah, just had a lot of anger issues with the phones at work, and just, so I am, I took the entire weekend and turned my phone off except for RJ and his sister and I did nothing else that's not true I did but I didn't take phone calls um, I just kind of shut down was I didn't care if the phones worked at work if they didn't they were gonna have a really easy day if they couldn't get faxes through I was gonna do a Monday it yeah I, I'm just not too worried about it so it is what it is um all right so I have just a little bit different today uh, for totally hooked I don't have anything um, in the basket I will update you on this one now I went out and took a picture I'm tired of this looking grayish purple so I took a picture of this out in natural light so maybe get a better um, concept of the color I guess so I'm gonna pop that in right here Okay, so I have the first side done. You probably saw it in the picture. And I'm on the decreases on this side, which that's the back, but here you go. And so I've started the decreases on this side. Um, and if you remember, I just wrote my pattern. It's not a pattern that you guys do, but yeah. So I am right here on this side where it says the four inch decrease every and up here it says every ninth stitch do it twice you know so this is just my handwritten how I do it um, and this is what and I haven't figured this part out yet um, I don't know I'm waiting to see I'm gonna get the second half made and I'm to that part on the back so I'll decide which one I want for the back which one I want for the front and then I'm gonna do some kind of design right here so I don't know if I'm going to do lace and then stitch it in. I've thought about that. And when I say lace, I mean um, with crochet. So I've been working on that. Uh, I got the baby blanket done. You guys saw that Thursday, I believe. And I mailed it out. So I hadn't been working on that. So I took something out of timeout <laughs> and it's amazing what timeout can do because now it doesn't seem so uh, to work on it um i jumped right back into it and it actually is coming out very nice uh i just have to keep going and this is a geo in case you have forgotten what it looks like it's going to be a shirt of up here so yeah oops and this is it has to go until it blocks out to 24 inches is what the pattern says so i'm not there but it it'll block out probably a good maybe 18 inches on the corner but then you've got this here so i've got to make sure that the whole thing blocks at 24 inches so and the way it works up of course it leaves it kind of looking narrow so and i've got the front and the back on that and they're exactly even if you remember when i'm doing stuff like this if i make a mistake it's in both sides so yep there's the other one and it's more red than it is orange i guess it's kind of showing up orange um in the camera but i've worked on them and done i don't know a couple more rows on them at least Oops. I'm dropping this stuff but I didn't really work that is honestly all the crochet if you're just here for the crochet that's it I haven't dyed anything I haven't spun anything I worked those bats and then I didn't even start them yet because I needed my wheel free for what was happening here I say on the farm or at my house I guess so 
Um, something else happened this week that the I've kind of been looking forward to. Um, the Humane Society had a duck come in from a place that was a meth lab. So I called him Mr. McQuack. He got here late Friday. So he spent the night in the garage in a carrier with food and corn. Okay. Then I took him out and we have a pond and it is very scummy, very algae covered. So anyway, I named him Mr. McQuack. I don't know why I just looked at him and said, yep, come on, Mr. McQuack. And that's what stuck. So um, got him home Friday night, Saturday morning. I went out and filled his belly again because these are not going to be, these are free range. These are on the pond, natural shelter, not anything I've constructed. It's just their natural habitat. So put Mr. McQuack out on the pond Saturday, checked him several times, um, went out and cleaned up trash. It was a beautiful day. Um, we live right off the highway, so trash blows over all the time. Did that. Um, pulled some sticks from the pond. I've got to get down there. i got a bunch of sticks up on the edge. We had cleared one side last year, and we've been mowing around it to get it under control. So um, this summer, of course, we'll go down there and cut down some more trees. There's some dead trees that need to come out and all that. But we're going to leave enough uh, habitat for this duck. And so I did that, checked him several times, and uh, was kind of nervous about leaving him down there. It, again, it's in his natural habitat. He's fine. Um, so Sunday morning, I jump up. Didn't even take time to get me a cup of coffee. I let the dogs out. They were in the front yard. And I hike down to the pond and I've been doing cracked corn for them just because and um, so got down there Mr. McQuack was fine but he wouldn't leave this one area that's got all this brush and I really couldn't get to it and I thought, huh? okay has he been injured did a turtle snap him did a coon grab him oh my god you know so I go around and I'm got I mean, guys, I'm still in my sweatpants and a t-shirt. My hair is stuck in the branches. And I am just whoo, whoo, going, man, we need to clean this spot out. But I don't want to because that's where Mr. McQuack seemed to be staying. So when I got down there, Mr. McQuack left me a present. And that's why Mr. McQuack wouldn't leave that area. The only problem is, is that present had rolled into the edge of the water. So Mr. McQuack is Miss McQuack. <laughs> RJ, I had sent him a picture and he told me, he says, Mom, I think he's a girl. I was like, man, I haven't really, I never stopped to look her over. Um, there was no twirly tail feathers and I knew that. And I was like, well, I don't know. Maybe he's just young. <laughs> so, Mr. McQuack laid an egg on the embankment and it rolled down into the water and he washed it and refrigerated it before I got there. So I collected the egg, fed him some corn right there in his little preferred spot. Decided, okay, maybe it is a girl. Yeah. So, um, I had also arranged, because it's only one, and they're flock animals. Uh, so I had arranged with a friend of mine at work because she needed to thin down some of her ducks she just lets them do whatever and if they miss eggs they hatch them out she had more boys and girls and she goes do you want a boyfriend for it when I told her what happened and I was like sure so she brought me two males that are definitely males okay so there's Miss McQuack there is one that is mostly white but he's got a little black on him so we call him Black Jack and then there is Mac so Mac, Black Jack, and Miss McQuack are out on the pond. And I went down and got you guys just a little bit of video so you kind of can see that area. And you can see where we've cleared and where we haven't. So I'm going to put that in right here. All right, so we've got Miss McQuack. we got Black Jack, who has black on his tails. And then we have Mac. 
and they're down here and I feed them some corn this is where they kind of hang out and then sometimes they'll go over to that other side over there but they hang out mostly right here so I'm pretty happy with them hopefully they're cleaning out the pond okay so yeah I ran down to the pond a lot this weekend and um, I also have been working a little bit around the house and I say that me as in roommate and I we were given a, a red couch and now we have the old couch to get rid of which should we're going to get rid of the couch and the left seat it's set it's older and a guy's going to come and pick it up their house burnt down and they just need furniture they don't care how old it is they'll put blankets on it they don't care so I said that's fine come get it um but then they were supposed to do it yesterday but then it started pouring down rain mm -hmm. yes so uh that didn't happen and they're coming tomorrow when the rain is supposed to have cleared off so I have a little bit of a video so you can kind of see how the den is just packed with furniture and I will put that in right here okay so we got this couch given to us and we were using let's pan over here this is my collection of furniture here um, these should be gone Wednesday which is tomorrow uh, because I just have them shoved over here to get till the guy comes and picks them up and then this chair will be here my wine rack and Big Bertha should be right there um, I don't know if she'll fit so she might have to go on that wall I don't know but I'm hoping to get Big Bertha out so I can actually start spinning on her as soon as this is gone which is tomorrow so the final thing that I did well around the house was there's been this old sewing machine around here and I sew and you guys know that and I am interested in seeing if it works um, later on today I'm gonna go and see I made you a little video clip so you can see it's a treadle it's an old treadle singer so <laughs> here's that clip okay so I moved this out of another bedroom and it is an old sewing machine I have not flipped it up to see if it works but I cleaned it up a little bit and um, I'm going to open this up later hopefully today and see if it works I don't know how much room it needs it's on wheels so I can just roll it that's how I got it in here and roommate now I'm gonna see if it works okay so if I have time today I am going to set it up and see what we got that's all I can say um I don't know if somebody has replaced it with a modern one I don't know what is in there um I have nose through the drawers there's zippers and thread and I'm gonna clean all that out but I just really really want to see if the machine is in there it's heavy enough but the cast iron base is also heavy enough so it's on wheels so it's real easy to move but and it's the little round metal wheels so it, it's cast iron wheels so anyway I'm gonna play with that a little bit and then Sunday um, I had one final thing and I haven't done any um, lessons in a while but I had someone contact me and I private lesson we discussed wool I spent time with her she's underage so I'm not gonna say a name or anything but um, I had a lot of fun remembered how fun it was to teach um, taught her to drop spindle um, just she hasn't gotten to play with the wheels yet but she asked a lot of questions and we talked a lot about wool and note taking um, I showed her my fiber notebooks I showed her um, the book I use for stitch combinations I warned her about books that you know she needs to be able to leaf through them before she buys them make sure they are what they claim they are um, if you've taken my Tunisian class you know what book I'm talking about that's not as accurate as it says um, so it is what it is but we spent about three hour, two and a half hours or so three hours right at three hours um, just talking fiber and I gave her a little care kit to go home some raw fiber um, she has one of my drop spindles on loan until she can get her own made or bought uh, so 
She is wanting to dabble. Now she does crochet. Um, she knows how to knit, but kind of like me, I'm more crochet. And so she uh, was asking a lot of questions about that. Um, we talked a lot about things. Uh, I gave grandma, if she, I told her, I said, if she's really into this, this is uh, the fiber source book, you know, of fleece and fiber. I told her that and I said, but it's expensive and it's, it's something that's a Christmas gift. It is not a barn book. Um, I talked to her about dyes and how to get started with Kool-Aid. If she wanted to dye some of her yarn, Kool-Aid dyeing does great for somebody her age to start. So we had a lot of fun and I just had one of those farmy fiber weekends that I used to live every day at the farm. So no work, no phone, just, it was great. I loved it. So <laughs> I had fun. Um, RJ was down in Alabama. He made some money, but not enough to cover expenses. He's finding out that with the price of gas right now, he can barely break even because driving down there with a horse and then roping. And when he wins, it's just not enough to recoup his expenses. Um, he just he's got one more trip that he has um obligated himself to and after that he says i think i'm just gonna start staying a little bit closer to home and i said okay you know he, he's winning but the thing is is after you take out expenses it's not enough to cover what you got in it so um he went to florida did the same thing there and figured out that you know, he, you just can't make expenses back going that far with gas prices the way they are right now. Um, the other thing is, is he's traveling with people who choose to eat out. Our family is a live from the cooler sandwiches when we're on the road. And we only stop to eat once every two or three days. Um, it, it's not that we stop. Let me rephrase that. We eat out of the cooler sandwiches morning and night you know we've got cereal we've got whatever um but then we'll stop to break up the monotony and once every three days we'll stop at a burger joint you know um and then when we're home it's like woohoo let's cook something so we'll make mac and cheese or whatever you know um but on the road they had a grill they could have grilled hot dogs they could have grilled their own burgers the other and eh, let's just eat out RJ doesn't like that because that drives up his expenses and it makes it harder for him to cover them. So, um, he's barely breaking even, even though when he's winning something. So, uh, he was in Alabama, did the same thing, uh, just barely broke even. And it's because you win, but it, the gas, the fuel, the on the road, parking for the night, places to stay, eating out those expenses add up and so he's struggling with that right now he says if gas was what it was when they thought this idea was a good thing if it was six months ago when they were setting all this up they probably could have made a little bit more but right now gas prices are going through the roof and he's like mom i can't make anything doing this so he's decided he's going to stay closer to home after he goes to the texas rodeo that he's obligated to so anyway there's that but I have had a wonderful weekend. Um, then I just been working on the geo and this sweater um, with it getting warmer. I say that, but then yesterday and today it got cold again. But with it warming up, I'm really wanting to get that geo done. So I am back to working on it today. I want to do some spinning. I've got those bats that I made up, and I know in my mind what I want to do with it uh, and I want to go see about that sewing machine I just want to get my hands in there I had some things I had to do this weekend running around or to this morning running around and so I haven't gotten a whole lot of the stuff I want to do done but I got all the stuff I had to do done so anyway I know this is all over the place but that is pretty much my week that is my crochet that is the ducks <laughs> the farmy stuff um i am kind of glad i have roommate but on the other hand i'm not 
because if I didn't have roommate, I would have a lot more stuff here, like maybe some goats, just one or two. Um, maybe just one bred goat and breed her every year and then have a baby. But uh, yeah, the ducks is my thing right now. We have the ducks and the dog. We're good, or two dogs. So yeah, and the ducks are showing that they're self-sustaining. I just bought one thing of corn and I did go down every morning and feed them. Now I say that, but when I go to work, the sun is not up yet and I don't want them quacking before uh, day, daybreak. So when I leave for work, I feed them at lunch, not in the morning because I work 12 hour shifts. So um, when I come home to let Hitch out, I stop and feed the ducks. And then if it's still daylight when I get home, I normally go down there and feed them a little more. So they've got plenty of corn down there, got plenty of algae, there's little fish in there, there's all kinds of stuff. They have been happy campers since they got here. So, and I'm okay with that. Yeah. so you guys have a great week um i'm gonna try to and i will talk to y'all next time bye